So there's a reason Dave's hitting these shots instead of me is because he is piping them down the center of the fairway, guys. This is a very tight par five here at Montgomery in Dubai. Beautiful, but also quite ominous with the water on the left and water on the right. Now, Dave's just slotted a bunch down the center of the fairway. And a big part of that, Dave, from the face on view is really about where our body finishes, right? And ensuring we're able to get into this big, tall, extended finish position where our belt would be leading our chest towards the target. That's what we see with the pros, right? Yes. Yeah. So what I want you to do is talk about the importance of that and relative to what you would see with the players who get a bit nervous, a bit hesitant, and they kind of stay down through the shot. Yeah, so with golfers who are trying to force and guide the club and make sure they hit a perfect shot, we see the upper body and the clubs that are dominating the downswing. As we move through this area, the belt buckle hasn't done enough, sits low, we almost see this sort of bent left leg shape. Sometimes yeah. that can lead to even tough contact with the driver. Yeah, yeah so it's not Big what we want. roof shot and we're yeah. in trouble, yeah. So it'd be great to see something with a bit more clearing this left side, yep. extending this left leg, nice rotation. So my belt buckle's moved a lot more round, it's more up as well, yep. rather than this staying down. down. As I do this and rehearse it in front of this camera, I just yep. want you to uh, highlight to the players at home really this movement of the pelvis and kind of like maybe a checkpoint they should be looking for of where this should finish relative to the rest of my body. So you can use your club, but if I slowly swing down and let's say my pelvis is moving forward and up, what should they be looking for as a reference point here? Yeah, I like this idea of this nice line coming up your left side. Mm -hmm. So up through the ankle, through the knee, through the hip, extending all the way up rather than sitting back off that line. Mm, yeah, yeah, something like this. And feedback, guys, is always super important. Now, having the end in mind is something that I tell a lot of players. Now, if we start from a good position, so we've got our driver setup principles and everything down pat, but then we also have an idea of where to finish, simply just rehearsing what David just said of getting the hips moving forward, the pressure to your front foot, the pelvis forward, the chest extended, and the arms long, and just getting and building an awareness as a few practice swings, just pushing that golf club through the ball and then slowly building up a little backswing, will start to give a great awareness of piecing this swing together. How do you feel about starting with the end in mind, Dave? I love it. When you, when you have a good image of the backswing, and I often do this in like the day one for someone's lesson. Yep. Once you have a good setup, where do you want to finish? And then we often sort of connect the dots yourself uh, without, without having to think too much through it. When you see a great finish position, we tend to see a lot of nice movement throughout the whole golf swing. So I think the finish position can set you up for a lot of tricky things to work. Yeah, and the mind is an incredibly powerful tool. We relate it to something that we do every single day. For most of us is drive a car, right? You don't think about the mechanics of turning your arm, your wrist, your flexion and extension, the feeling of the handle of the steering wheel in your hand. You look at the road and your body reacts to that because you have the visual of it. So when we're over the ball, we have an idea in our head of what the visual of a good follow through should look like. Pelvis forward, hips forward, chest tall, arms extended. And then if we simply think about that over the golf ball, we've got a far greater chance of actually achieving that when we go about our swing. Now, there is one thing we must mention that's incredibly important on this is the backswing, Dave. What should players make sure they do? Because we can't essentially just stand up here and go, end in mind, end in mind. Yeah, that was great. We're gonna struggle. What do they still need to remember to do in the backswing? Yeah, you've got to build up the energy. So you've got to make that backswing. So yeah. you've got to get that wind up, nice big coil from your torso, from your pelvis. Let's move around to get your club in a good spot to then send it through the golf ball. Good. Yeah, so that is so important, making sure that from the address, we can have the end in mind. We see the best players in the world when they're bombing these drives. They get that beautiful ascending delivery of the driver, which is what we need. And the golf club head to be rising through the moment of impact gives us a high launch, low spin, lots of power like we just saw Dave do here at the Montgomery. But on the way through, ensuring that we're getting this pelvis really nice and far forward is gonna give us the greatest chance of success when it comes to hitting these shots. All right, Dave? So come in here, mate, and we're gonna send one more down for us. I want you to have a couple of practice swings, really focusing on that pelvis getting through. Perfect. Build up again. You can see he's mapping out the backswing, building up a little bit more energy. Pelvis finishing beautifully far forward. Hips and everything, perfect spot. Off you go. Love it. Absolutely nailed. 
Fantastic finish position, guys. If you want to improve your driving, listen to David here. That's exactly what you're going to need to do to send some bombs out there.